In this video, we'll be looking at the two topics, algebra of sets and sizes of sets. For the algebra of sets, there are three main properties that the algebra of sets has. We have the three properties associative, commutative, and distributive. Let's look at each one of those individually. Now you'll notice that on th this particular page and the following, we have properties on the left hand side of the page and also on the right hand side of the page. Each of these properties is uh, can be shown in two different ways. Notice that on, let's look at the associative property. We have, we're going to look at the union on this side. So we have A union B as a quantity, union C. And because of the associative property, we could do the union, or we could do the union of B and C first, and then the union of A, or with A. Now, the reason we have two columns essentially on the one on the left and one on the right is we have a similar property for intersection. And so here we have A intersect B first and then intersect C. That's the same as A intersect with the <coughs> the quantity intersect B intersect C. So we would do B intersect C and then intersect with A. All of these properties have duals, one on, one on the left for union and one on the right for intersect. The commutative property means that we can swap the order without affecting the result. So we have A union B is the same as B union A. And then also A intersect B is the same as B intersect A. Now we know that a lot of properties or a lot of operators have this property for instance the addition operator if we wanted to add two numbers 1 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 1 but there are some properties or some operators that don't have this property for instance the division operator 1 divided by 2 is not the same as 2 divided by 1 so we have to make sure that we when we're talking about um, you know something that we define these properties specifically. We have distributive property here where we've got the A, we've got B intersect C first and then union A. We can use the distributive property where we first do the A union B. So we have A union B and then we intersect it with A union C. So we're distri distributing the union among that intersection. So we have A union B intersected with A union C. Now if we reverse A union and intersect we have a similar property where we have the union on the inside and the intersect outside. So we'll have A intersect with the quantity B union C and we distribute the intersect so that we have A intersect B and then we union that with A intersect C. There are several other laws that can be derived from the ones that we we just looked at. The first is De Morgan's laws, and with De Morgan's laws, we're using the not operator. So we have a union b, and we take the not of that. It can be shown that that's equal to a knotted, and then intersected with b knotted. So notice that when we do this, we we have the in, the not above the whole quantity and then we have on the other side the not on just the individual items on the left we have union on the right we have intersect and because of the dual nature of these operators we can also have a not operate operator over the a intersect b and we can then show that that's equal to a not union B not. So notice that we have intersect here, union here. Some other laws are shown here and most of these are pretty intuitive. A unioned with A is A and so on. Um, these almost don't even require us to go through. The not of the universal set is the empty set and notice that on the right hand side we have the dual of all the ones that we have on the left 
So the knot of the empty set is the universal set. <clears throat> and we have one final one at the bottom here. If we knot a set twice, we get back to our original set. Let's look at an example that uses some of these properties. We're going to have a universal set, and the universal set includes all integers from 1 to 9. We have the set A that has 1, 2, 3, 7, and 8. B has 2, 5, 6, 7, 8. And C has 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. With these sets, we're going to find the following. A union C intersected with B union C. A intersect, sorry, C intersect A union B intersect A. A not intersected with B intersect C. And finally, finally A not union B intersected with the quantity A intersect C not. All right, let's look at the first one. Actually, before we start anything, let's look at the Venn diagram of, of all of our sets. Notice that I've, I've drawn three circles, all of them overlapping with a section here in the middle that is an overlap of all three sets. The, so looking at those sets, uh, let's just look at one of them, A. A has the element 1, which is not in either any of the other two sets. It has, it, com it shares 2 with B, but not with C. It shares 3 with C, but not with B. And then finally, notice that in all three sets, we have the, the elements 7 and 8. So we put those two elements here in the middle. Now let's look at the first, the first item that we want to find. <clears throat> A union C intersected with B union C. Notice that we have union C in both of these. We could just figure out what A union C is, then B union C, and then do the intersection of those two. That's totally fine. Uh, we, can, we could just go with that. Or if we want, we could do some simplification. And so since we have union C on the first part and union C on the second part, we can pull out that union C. So now we pull out that union C. And since we have intersect in, the, in, in between those two, we have A intersect B. So the final item that I'm going to look at is A intersected and intersect B, and then union that with C. So I drew a little Venn diagram here so we could figure out what items belong to this set. The red part, or the red lines, indicate the A intersect B. Notice it's that football shape between A and B. And then I filled in C with the blue colors. Now since we're doing the union of those two groups, the, the final set includes all of the elements that are, are shaded. And so we can go just over to our Venn diagram over here and pick out all those items. 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, and 8. So I listed them there. 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. Looking at the next one, we have a similar property. We have C intersect A, union B intersect A. And I'm going to simplify this and pull out a, notice that there's an intersect in both these, in these two, intersect A. So I'm going to pull that out. And then I've, so I'm left with C union B. And then I intersect that with A. So I've drawn C union B in blue. Notice it includes all of C and B. And then I put A in red. Now since we're dealing with the intersection of those two groups, or those two sets, it's just where we have a common or an intersection where we have both blue and red. And so I drew that diagram over here with just that, that final result. So those are the elements that we would want to include. Now going back, I'll, I'll go back on this one. I may not do it on the rest of them. But if we go back, that'll include these elements here. 2, 3, 7, and 8. So that final set is 2, 3, 7, and 8. Now let's look at the next one. 
This one is just intersections A not intersected with B intersect C. Now remember through the the associative property we could do A intersect B, A not intersect B first and then intersect with C. Now I'm going to show both of those. The first one is A not is in red so we have all of this make sure we go through also the C and B so that's A not the B intersect C is in blue, so that's the the shade, the football shape there in between C and B. And notice that since we're doing the intersect of those two, it'll be only where where they have both red and blue. And notice that that's just this little part right here. You can see it over here. I've drawn the final solution over here. Now let's look at the second the second one also. A not intersected with B, and then we'll intersect that with C. So I've drawn A not intersect B in blue. And notice that's the same as B minus A. So we've got that area here in blue. And then f the other part is just C. So I've got C in red. And since we're doing the intersection of those two, we're looking only where we have both red and blue. And therefore, it's again, it's just this the same little section. And so we see that we can do that associative, associative property um, either way. And if we look back at our Venn diagram, where there's only one element in there, and that is five. Now looking at the last part of the problem, we see that we have A union A not union B intersect A intersect C all knotted. I'm going to use De Morgan's law to simplify this part to get A not union C not. And then I'm going to notice that A not, I have A not union here and an A not union here. I'm going to pull those out to get A not union B intersect C not. And now I'm going to just look at this for the solution. So I have A not in red and B not intersect C not B sorry, B intersect C naught, which is B minus C, which is just this blue. And because I'm doing the union, I'm including all those. Now, at this point, don't forget the nine that's in that outside part. It's very easy to just think, oh, I'm going to include all of them that are inside these sets and forget that nine. So don't forget that nine. Now let's look at sizes of sets. We have different definitions here. Countable set. Basically we can just count the elements in the set. One, two, three, four. Uncountable sets, we can't count the elements. There's just too many. We can have finite sets where there's a finite number of elements in the set. And we can have an infinite set where there's an infinite number of elements in the set. Now we can combine those. We can have countably infinite sets where there's an infinite number of elements, but we can count them and we can have uncountably infinite sets where there's an infinite number of elements but we can't count them. So let's look at some examples. Here's an example. The first one is the set contains all elements x where x is an integer and the elements and x is between 100 and 10,000. So the first element in the set would be 101. We could say that that's element 1. The next element would be 102. We can say that that's element 2, and so on. So if we can do that, we can count them. Therefore, it's countable. It's also will stop at a certain number, n, and therefore there's a finite number of elements in that set, and so it's a count, finite countable set. If we look at this next set, this is all of the numbers between 0 and 1. Now these are all the real numbers between 0 and 1. So let's say 0 is the first element. That's, that's easy to figure out. We have 0. We'll count that as 1. But what is the next element? Um, 0 with an infinite number of zeros. 0 point infinite number of zeros with a 1 on the end. No, we can't really do that. We can't count them. Therefore, it's an uncountable set, and it's infinite. And this set is huge compared to these, this other set, or these other sets. Now let's suppose we have x is just all the atoms in your book. It might seem like it's an infinite number, but it's not. We have a finite number of elements or atoms in your book, and therefore, and we could count them if we could isolate them. Therefore, it's finite and 
accountable.